these hats and more at shoppingbigfc.com. The Brazilian Juliana Lima, 12 years the elder of Emily Ducote. It is Lima that stands three inches taller, both on point at weigh-ins. Lima will have a three inch reach advantage. For our official introductions of this strawweight main event, here is Joe Martinez. Well, ladies and gentlemen, live on UFC Fight Pass from the Pal Gym here in Kansas City, Kansas, this is the main event of the evening. Three rounds scheduled this in the Invicta FC strawweight division. Sanctioned by the Kansas Department of Gaming Commission, the executive director is Adam Rohrbach. Your three judges scoring at cage side, Nick Behrens, Greg DeVilbis, and Stephen Graham. And when the action begins inside the cage, referee in charge, Marcio La Selva. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Fight fans, let the world know if you are ready! Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, this mixed martial artist stands five feet, five inches tall. Weighing at officially 115 and one half pounds in 16 professional fights, her record, 10 victories and six defeats. Fighting out of Houston, Texas, here is Juliana Juta Lima. And across the cage, her opponent fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, two inches tall. She weighed in 115 and one quarter pounds and in 14 professional fights, holds a record of eight victories and six defeats. Fighting out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, here is Emily Gordinho Ducote. All right, guys, we went over the rules. I expect a clean fight. Obey my commands all the time. Protect yourself all the time. Shake your hands now if you want. Come back swinging. Marcia La Silva getting this main event assignment. It is the Brazilian veteran Juliana Lima and Emily Ducote. PJ DeSantis, Julie Kedzie, Laura Sanko. This is our main event here in Kansas City of Invicta FC 40. Lima in the black. Ducote in the pink with white. Dakota came up short in her title bid against Kanaka Murata, dropping it via split decision. She said that she was calling Shannon Knapp over and over again, trying to get a fight. And when the name Juliana Lima came in front of her, she was very excited about this opportunity against a very well-traveled veteran. Both of these women are, are veterans in their own right. Both of them have big show experience, and I expect this to be a very, very high-level technical fight. And you see Dakota pumping that jab a little bit, looking for the opening. Nice left kick there to the body by Lima. We talked to Lima about her game, saying that, uh, you know, uh, uh, she said a lot of the ladies like to hug me. And uh, she wants to get her offense going before that uh, might happen here tonight. Yeah, she, she's aware. I mean, that, that has been the blueprint for really stifling her game is to, to rush in and pin her up against the cage. But she knows that that's coming. She knows that Ducote will likely be looking to do that and to shoot. And, uh, you know, she says she's prepared for it. I would like to see her sit down on those strikes, though, and really deliver power. And right now, Ducote is doing a little bit more of that. She is, and Ducote has this uh, really nice way of switching stances mid-combo. So you see her throwing and then pull one leg back. It's a good flurry, not a lot landed. Lima marching forward, trying to initiate the clinch of her own there, but Ducote able to avoid it. Now back at space. Now it's Lima rushing in with some punches, trying to grab a hold of the head of Ducote, but she fails to control her. And Ducote really does need to watch out for her head being controlled by the taller fighter. Lima has some vicious, vicious knees. Attacking with that right front kick was Lima. Two minutes down here in this opening round. There have been times in her fights when Dakota doesn't respond uh, as well to pressure, but when you're Lima and you don't necessarily have possibly the, the power advantage in these strikes, you have to deliver that pressure in terms of volume. And I would love to see her continue to just pepper and pepper and pepper and stay in the face of Dakota and Dakota, uh, you know, deliver those harder shots. 
Big right hand by the Brazilian. The left finds a home by Lima. And that one hurt. You can see her blinking oh, on that good nice right. uppercut. Jacody may be hurt, backing up. Lima marching her down. Flurry of punches here now to the clinch. Dakota putting Lima into the fence. And this is where Dakota has to be really careful about what angle she's at. I love the way Lima's framing on the head like that, setting up a knee. Dakota using that head to sort of break that posture of Lima. Appreciate all the fans watching tonight on Fight Pass. At TJ DeSantis, at Jules K underscore fighter, at Laura underscore Sanko, of course, at Invicta Fights. Hashtag Invicta FC40. Beautiful frame by Lima and those knees absolutely landing there. That, that is what she needs to do, really rely on that Muay Thai background first. Firing back is to Cody, but Lima has found a home for some of these strikes. Less than 90 seconds left in round number one. Lima coming alive with some punches, but Dakota's still very game. Yeah, and I think what you said about Lima being hungry, Laura, you can really see that hunger there. She wants to finish. She wants, she's, she's a shark out there. She does much better when she's marching forward, she, when she is the aggressor. I do agree with that. However, <laughs> I will say that that does leave her off balance quite a few times. It's okay, Jerry. We can we can we can disagree. <laughs> You're right, though. She is off balance at times. I agree with both of you. <laughs> I think you have to. Yes. <laughs> when you see somebody moving forward and landing shots to somebody's face, you tend to think they're doing well. That was a nice right hand response there from Dakota. Didn't do much damage though. 30 seconds left here in round number one. You can see swelling under the eye of Dakota. She's definitely taken some damage here. But credit to the composure of Dakota. She's taken some very hard shots from Lima, but has never disengaged, stopped defending herself. Pushing off the fence there. A little Superman punch by Lima. Final 10 seconds of the round. Dakota trying to finish with a takedown here. Nice balance there by Lima. Job. Dakota did land a nice outside calf kick. I'd like to see her do more of that in the next game. Five minutes in the books between these straw weights, our main events between Emily Dakota and Juliana Lima. Solid bit of work by both athletes. We saw Lima, though, staying true to herself, getting what she wanted to uh, across in that fight, and that's showing off some of her Muay Thai skills. Yeah, she's much more aggressive than we saw her be in the Phoenix series. I don't know if that's the format of this fight, just knowing that she's got the typical three rounds, but she's coming out there, and she's hungry. She's coming forward. She's landing a lot of those strikes, and I think she's kind of putting Dakota a little bit more on her heels than she expected to be in this opening round. Julie, walk us through some of this action. Well, we could just see some of those really big power strikes landing from Lima and allowing herself to be creative there and then off the cage just bracing and throwing those knees aiming for the head aiming for the body and again that knee to the head on the break is really beautifully done last 10 seconds of this round you can see that low calf kick Laura was talking about and this uh, the takedown attempt that Lima was able to power through and uh, balance through we are headed to round number two. Emily Ducote, Juliana Lima. Or not. It's our main event of Invicta FC 40. See some swelling under the right eye of Emily Ducote. All three judges like the Brazilian in that round, 10-9. Right hand finds a home there by Ducote. Coming forward with some punches is Lima. Right hand finds a home. You can tell how much tape they studied of each other um, in, in just kind of the rhythms and the way they're moving. Dakota said that she is always in front of her television on fight night, whether it's potential opponents she's watching or just typical events on a Saturday night. She is definitely a fight fan. And of course, a factor here at 115. Lima landed a really nice shot there, but it does seem like when Dakota lands, Lima makes much more of a face. There's much more of a reaction. It almost seems to freeze her momentarily when those hard shots land. 
Yeah, I think Dakota lands some really deceptively hard shots, um, especially her right hand. Lima's doing a much better job of using her reach, or, well, she was in the first round. Now this tie-up, it's hard to say, but I like that Dakota's trying to move on these angles. She's trying to get through those transition, um, transitions quickly. You don't want your head grabbed by Juliana Lima. 90 seconds down here in round number two. Laura, are you surprised that Dakota is content to uh, allow Lima to do th this Muay Thai style of game, or are you surprised she hasn't tried to take this fight to the floor? I am, actually. I really expected her to be shooting uh, much earlier in this fight, maybe looking to throw some overhands you know, to a single leg, like we were talking about in, in, in an earlier fight there, Julie. But um, I, I think that she's a little bit surprised, maybe, by the offense that we're seeing from Lima. Lima being much more active than we've seen her be in recent fights. We talked about the motivation level for Juliana Lima. Sometimes you look at a fighter's last fight, Julie, and they wake up and they're a completely different fighter when you step in the cage with them. Yeah, it's true. And Lima said, you know, after she dropped the Phoenix series, ooh, that was nicely done, uh, she really dedicated herself to competing in jiu-jitsu and, and tried to get, you know, get a handle on why these wrestlers were laying on her so much. A lot of action here starting to unfold in round number two. And I like the way Lima's using her length, but she sticks her chin out a little bit, and I'm saying that as somebody who stuck her chin out way too much, so I can recognize it. I think she needs to be careful about that right hand. So Dakota pushing her up into the cage. And this is where she needs to be careful of her head placement. Nima was able to get that overhook on the right arm of Dakota and spins away, gets to space. The uppercut there. Not getting pinned on the fence, those are big victories for Lima because that's something that she really struggled with in the Phoenix series. In the Phoenix series, hard for the style of fighter that Juliana Lima is. Just one round in those preliminary fights. She was a semi-finalist, losing to Brianna Van Buren. Nice combination there by Dakota, but answered from Lima. Lima starting to nice scream with some of those punches, but it is Dakota that's able to time the shot beautifully and now is inside control. She has to be very careful in maintaining that position or in these transitions because Lima's got an excellent ground game. Nice elbows there from the side. Um, she's got an excellent ground game, and when she gets on top, her ground and pound is vicious. However, dakota has got some pretty wicked ground and pound and submissions as well. Dakota has shown off her submission game time and time again. 50% of her wins in mixed martial arts come by way of submission. A oh, beautiful elbow finds a home right on the forehead. Lima might be in some trouble. Three hard elbows by Emily Ducote. Now I'm, I'm really surprised that Ducote didn't base out and she allowed Lima to get back to guard. She wasn't in a full mounted position, but she could have triangled her legs there. Now here's where she's got to be real careful about those long legs. Oh. Picked her away, did Lima. Now back to the feet, final seconds of round number two. Ten minutes in the books, you can see the right eye underneath Juliana Lima cut pretty badly. The cut man will have his work cut out as we head into this third and final round. Got to believe that's one of the elbows that found a home in round number two, Julie. Uh, Ducote uh, showing some ground and pound there on the floor in the latter part of that round. Yeah, that was really well done. She does a nice job of facing her hand and then skidding the elbow at times. And I think that's what caused the cut, although I didn't see the angle correctly. Um, you know, Lima, you could tell when they got back up to their feet, she was like, I want to look strong in the last one. She got real aggressive there at the end. But she's, uh, Lima's getting, you know, she's landing those really, really hard long right hands, and it's, it's popping to Cody quite a bit. And then we see that takedown, that single leg with the wrap up. Lima goes to the cage, she gets the overhand, and then we take a look at those elbows. Yep, she bases and then she slides that elbow right down. That's so nicely done. You don't have to create that much space there. You just have to find a way to use the momentum of your arm to create damage. And I love those elbows. 
And that was the tale of two different corners in between rounds two and three here. Juliana Lima was on her stool getting tended to, and Emily Ducote has been pacing in her corner. I don't even know if she sat down. If she did, it wasn't for more than two seconds. She's ready to go. And it could have been a strategy of hers to bring Lima into later rounds. Uh, between the two of them, she's had more five-round fights. The fight is up for grabs, 19-19 across the board. These strawweights need to settle it here in round number three. Momentum is such a big thing in a fight, and the way that second round ended, you got to believe the momentum right now favors Emily Jacoby. And Lima's front kick to the body lands really well, but it, it does leave an opening for takedown. And this is where that motivation will ring through for Juliana Lima when you're back to be against the wall at times. Sometimes it's easy to take a back seat. That will not be the case here. She's marching forward. Laura, that cut underneath the eye of Lima. It's got to be a target, though, for Emily Ducote. Oh, absolutely. I mean, all, all is fair in fighting. I mean, if you see, you see an injury on your opponent's face, you're absolutely going to target that. And it's pretty swollen. But in a fight, you don't really feel those things necessarily. And the cut man did a great job of closing that up. Now back into the clinch. So a shot of the cut there under the eye of Lima. Cody trying to use that head pressure. And so many of these cage exchanges have been about who has control um, of Lima's kind of right hand. They're fighting through that Lima's right and Dakota's left. Lima went for a trip takedown there, unable to get it. Short little uppercut there on the break. Nice right hand finds a home for the Brazilian. Pawing with that jab is Lima. Right hand by Dakota, answer with the left by Juliana. Oh, nice uppercut again. Uh, the cut underneath Lima's eye starting to open. And it's interesting to see Dakota, she doesn't really back up that much. She'll switch stances, but she'll oh, stay right in Lima's punching range to find her counters. It's a hard head. Big combination of punches there by Ducote. Halfway point here of round number three. I'd really like to see Ducote take her head off center when she when she goes to throw that calf kick and really dig into it, really, really throw it with some power because I do think it is affecting Lima, especially if she could get them to add up a little bit more. Yeah, I'm not a fan of a kick that's kind of just thrown without punches to preview yeah. it. I think it needs to be blocked a little bit. Uh, 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 I should say kind of camouflage a bit. Combination of punches there. Left found a home for Dakota. Switching between stances. Goes to the body with the left hand. And it's something Dakota does well. She can interrupt, she can disrupt the combination. There you go. That, that's an example of really putting the power behind it. But you're right, Julie. She does need to do an even more effective job of setting it up with strikes, not making it a naked kick. It would be interesting to see her work the inside also of Lima's leg. Um, get some inside shots because I think it would open up that right hand really well. So Lima seems to be slowing down a little bit, but still throwing power. I feel like Ducote came out in this round and said, you know what, I'm not going to leave the octagon in the center of the octagon. I'm going to stay there. That is my octagon, and I'm not leaving. One minute left in this third and final round between these strawweights. Ducote finds a nice combination of punches. Now a takedown by Cordinia. She secures it in the guard here. Butterfly of Juliana Lima. That is a huge takedown at this point in the fight. It is. You can see Lima's pushing for space to try and get those elbows. A cut to the top of the eyebrow would be significant in terms of Dakota's vision. Interesting decision here by Dakota to disengage and allow Lima back to her feet. I think she senses she's tired and it is exhausting to have to get back up your feet. If she continues, oh, oh, nicely done. Maybe not so tired. Dakota able to stifle that takedown. 
tries to answer with some punches. Final 10 seconds of this strawweight main event. Emily Ducote, Juliana Lima. And you can see Ducote switching stances back and forth. There it is, 15 minutes in the books between the strawweights, Juliana Lima was in control early. The second round saw Emily Ducote rally, cut open Lima, and then the third, Emily Ducote didn't want to be stifled, and we saw that in the final five minutes. No, she absolutely did not. She, she planted herself in the center of that octagon and said, I'm not leaving this place. And I think, you know, TJ, like you said, in between rounds, I saw a fire in Ducote that was, it was a combination of frustration, aggression, and you saw that coming out in the round. I, both of those women were landing, though. I really, I think that that takedown was a huge moment in that round. I wish she would have re-engaged, but I guess that was out of respect for Lima's ground game. When you look at a, a fight, one that goes into the latter parts of the fight, the deep rounds, Julie, champions are made of the ones that can readjust and refocus their offensive attack based on what their opponent is throwing at them. And Cody very much is a, a factor in this title mix if she gets this win, but tonight she showed the heart of a champion. She seriously did, TJ. Um, I think adjustment is the key word for her. I think she's able to do that so well. All right, the judges have tallied their tens and nines. Let's see who's walking away with this one. Here's Joe Martinez. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. The totals are all the same, 29-28. Your winner by unanimous decision, Emily Godinia Ducote. She gets her hand raised once again inside the Invicta FC octagon. Emily Ducote earning a unanimous decision over a very game Brazilian in Juliana Lima. Talking to Ducote before this fight, we can't tell, tell her story in Invicta without going back to her debut where she knocked out Janeza Moranjan. She came up short in her title, but I asked her if she felt she could potentially be in the title hunt with the win here tonight. She wasn't really focusing on that. Now I think she very much can focus on that, Julie. Yeah, you know, I think Emily Ducote is a person who does, she focuses on what's in front of her. She's got, like I said, it's not a cold attitude, but it's, def it's, it's one that's, really kind of honed in there and you can see she has a goal she's going to go for her goal she's going to get it she even even in talking about her title fight and dropping the title fight the way she phrased it was i have a lot of opinions about that um <laughs> she probably has some opinions about this fight too but we can see some highlights of what made her successful in the judges eyes it was you know 